I have been a director, choreographer, performer for many, many years traveling around the world. Sometimes I work for other people. I help fix their productions. And in this particular case that I want to tell you about, I was working for a director and the actors were great. The concept was great. I was hired to help her improve her direction so she would do some directing and then I would fix it and I was also choreographing the work and I was also doing the stage fight choreography okay the actors were great the director was crazy the director was a crazy maker the director made everyone stressed so there we were in the middle of the project and I would get to the place I biked from my apartment in Copenhagen to the train station, took a half hour train ride, got to the place. Come home at the end of the day, I would get back on my bike and I'd bike back to my apartment. In this particular case, I had been very stressed, as had the entire cast, because of this director. And I showed up one day and when I, when it was time to put my keys, my wallet, my rock back in my pocket. I couldn't find my rock anywhere and I was looking around for my rock. I had this rock. It was in my pocket with my keys and my wallet and my uh, phone and I asked the other people, hey, anyone see a rock anywhere? And they said, no, no, I didn't see any rock. I say, I lost my rock. I say, you'll find another rock. Okay, what's the big deal about this rock? What they didn't know is that I've been collecting rocks all my life. When I was little and I was in school, I was a walker from my elementary school to home and I would collect rocks and bring them home. But I didn't collect little rocks, I collected big rocks. Big rocks that I found in the woods on the way home and I would carry them between my legs. My fingers were bleeding sometimes, I was upset and whimpering at the front door and my mom would hear me and she'd open the door and help me put the rock into a pile that I had collected, that they had collected for me. And ultimately that pile of rocks was so big that we could ring every flower bed on our property <laughs> with all of the rocks that I brought home. Okay, why do I tell you that? Because I've always had this fascination with rocks. I love them. And there's colors and shapes and sizes and I found through the years various rocks that feel really good in my hand and I'll keep one in my pocket and it makes me feel good. People don't know about it. I don't need to tell them. I just every now and again dig my hand into my pocket and I can feel that rock. It feels good in my hand. It's a comfort to me. So when I lost this rock at the rehearsal and I asked these people, they just thought it was a rock. What they didn't realize is that this particular rock had been with me in my pocket almost every day for 11 years. I loved this rock and I couldn't find it. I was stressed out at this job and I couldn't find the rock and that made me a little more stressed. Okay. I looked around. When I got back to my bike, I looked around the bike. When I got back to the apartment, I looked around the apartment. Couldn't find the rock anywhere. The next week was my last week. My contract was up for renewal. I could choose to join on for extra money for an extra few weeks of work. And I had grown so tired of this particular director and her stress that I then showed up again that next week. And at the end of that week, I opted to terminate my time with this group. I said, thanks so much. I'm delighted. I'm not going to continue, not going to renew the contract. And um, she asked why, and I said, actually, and I told her the truth. I said, you stress people up, and I am not going to, you know, I'm not going to take part in this anymore. I'm buying back my stress-free life from this director, right? So I said goodbye to everybody. I wished them well. Took the train back to my bike, 
And before I got on my bike, I looked a little bit further out from where I normally checked, because I always parked at the same exact spot. And there, about eight feet away, underneath the tire of another bike, it had been raining, so there was a shiny black glimmer. And I moved that bike tire, and there was my rock. And... It came at just the right time. Now, you may think that this is the story of me and my time at this place and a stressed out person and I lost my rock and I found the rock. But I'm going to tell you something. In that time of stress, in order to get through that, I had sacrificed to the universe my comforting friend rock that relaxed me for 11 years. That is what I sacrificed. And the day that I bought back my freedom, the day that I decided that I was not for sale, the universe rewarded me and gifted me back my rock. Reach in my pocket. It feels great in my hand. It has these wonderful shiny edges to it. And it feels really nice. And no one knows about it. I don't tell people. I share it with you now. But the fact is that I've now had this rock for many years since then. So what would this story be had I simply told you that I have a rock that I keep? in my pocket all the time and it makes me feel good and I showed you that rock. It's just a rock. But once I elaborated on the profound significance of the universe taking away and then giving to for my sacrifice, I could show you that rock and you could take a look and see that imbued power connecting that rock to the universe. That is the power of storytelling. And that is the reason that there is no need to always make everything a giant prop. You can have something seemingly trivial and endow it with all the power of the universe.